like in this textbook. This is what it's presented like, again, in others sometimes, um, that I've seen. Um, a, and, a and B will change places depending on which is larger. However, in this textbook, A squared is always under the X, B squared is always under the Y. Okay, so let's look at what we have. They gave us the vertex, the focus point, and the eccentricity. So let's talk about what eccentricity is before we get going. Um, eccentricity is how, how much of deviation you have in your ellipse. In a circle, the eccentricity is equal to 1, okay? But the more, the longer or the taller your ellipse it gets, the more eccentricity you have. And the way you find the eccentricity, the eccentricity is going to be the distance from the center to the focus point divided by the distance from the center to a vertex on your major axis, okay? So that is how we find the eccentricity. Okay, which will depend if you have a horizontal, your major axis, okay, here, Remember, if it's horizontal, this distance is A from the center of the ver to the vertex. And C, of course, is always going to be the center to the focus point. So your eccentricity on a horizontal ellipse is going to be C divided by A. If you have a vertical ellipse in this textbook, this distance from the center to the vertex is B. Okay. But again, still, the center to the focus point is just C. So if it's vertical, your eccentricity is going to be C over B. Okay? Other important things we need to know is that for horizontal ellipses, C is equal to the square root of A squared minus B squared, because A is larger in a horizontal. And in a vertical ellipse, C is the square root of B squared minus A squared because the B is larger. Okay? Well, what do we need? We need the center, we need A, and we need B, and they gave us none of those. So let's see how we can find them. Let's put the pieces we have. We have a vertex at negative 2, 1. We have a focus point at 1, 1. And we have the eccentricity is equal to 1 half. We know that we should have a center somewhere over here to the right. So we can see we have a horizontal ellipse in this case. Okay? So we know that this distance from wherever our center is to this vertex is going to be A. And the distance from our center here is going to be C. Okay? We know that our our center is something comma 1, because notice our y values are not changing, our x values are. We know that our vertex is out here at negative 2, 1, and our focus point is at 1, 1. Well, we know the eccentricity is equal to 1 half, and in this case, since it's a horizontal ellipse, our eccentricity is C over A. Okay, so we know that C is the distance from the center to our focus point. So it's the x value. We don't know our x yet for our vertex. But if we took x minus 1, that would give us the distance, actually the absolute value of that, from the center to the focus point, which is, which is c. If we took x minus negative 2, clear out here, that would give us our distance to a. Okay. And we know that should be equal to 1 half, because we had C over A is our eccentricity, okay, is equal to 1 half. They told us that. So let's solve this equation to find the x value of our center. Here we have minus a negative. I'm going to make that plus. We cross multiply. And I would have 2 times x minus 1 equals 1 times x plus 2. I get 2x minus 2 is equal to x plus 2, and we solve that for x, and we get x equals 4. Okay, 
So we know the x value of our vertex is 4. We now know our vertex, sorry, our center is 4. So we now know our center is at 4, 1. Okay, so let's write down that part of our equation. We have x minus 4 squared over something plus y minus 1 squared over something equals 1. Our a was the distance from our center to our vertex, since this is a horizontal. So how far is it from negative 2 to 4? It's a distance of 6. Okay, and we square the a in our standard form. Uh, we don't know b. That would be the vertical distance to the sides of our ellipse if we finished it off. But we do know how to find it because if we look right here, we've memorized that c equals the square root of a squared minus b squared on a horizontal ellipse. So we plug in what we have. c is the distance from the center to the focus point. Our center was at 4, 1. The focus point was at 1, 1. So how far is it from 4 to 1? It's a distance of 3. So I'm going to bring this right down over here to do my work to find B. C was 3. Our A was 6. If I square the 6, I get a 36 in there. Okay. We're going to square both sides to get rid of the radical. We get 9 is equal to 36 minus B squared. Subtract 36 from both sides. And I get negative b squared equals negative 27. So b squared is 27. We take the square root and we find b is the square root of 27. Put that in our standard form. So we have x minus 4 squared over 6 squared plus y minus 1 squared over the square root of 27 squared equals 1. We don't want to leave those squared there. We want to simplify that. So we finish this off. Our answer is x minus 4 squared over 36, excuse me, plus y minus 1 squared over 27 is equal to 1. That is the standard form of the equation of an ellipse that has a vertex at negative 2, 1, focus point at 1, 1, and an eccentricity of 1 half. Okay, we're going to do one more of those problems, but it's going to be a vertical ellipse instead of horizontal. Okay. And I seem to be writing all over. Let's see what we're given to this point. We are given a vertex at 2, negative 9. We're given a focus point at 2, negative 1. And we're given our eccentricity is one third. Now the way that the vertex and focus point are lined up, we can tell that we have a vertical ellipse. Okay. So for our little equations, we know that the length of from the center to our vertex point is going to be b. And I'm having serious issues with my <laughs> writing pad. Sorry about that. So we know that, that C over B is going to be our eccentricity. Okay. We also know that to find our A, we're going to have to use this equation. C squared is equal to B squared minus A squared. So let's go back over. And look at what we have so far. We know we probably have a center somewhere up here. We're not sure exactly where that might be. But we do know that our x coordinate is going to be 2 for that center. So we have 2 something. Um, for our standard form, it's going to look like this, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Okay, we don't have any of our parts yet, so we're going to have to set up an equation to find the y value of our center.
Okay. Our focus point is at 2, negative 1. Our vertex is at 2, negative 9. So we know whatever our y value is, we can find that by doing y minus negative 1, which would become plus eventually. That's going to be our c. Okay. Our b is going to be y minus negative 9. That would be the distance from the center of y to the focus point, which is at negative, or the vertex, which is negative 9. We know that should equal 1 third because our eccentricity is c over b, the distance from center to the focus point over the distance from the center to the vertex. Let's solve that equation so we have our center and can actually solve this problem. So we're going to cross multiply. We get 3 times y plus 1 equals 1 times y plus 9. So I get 3y plus 3 equals y plus 9. Let's go ahead and solve that for y. We get 2y equals 6 or y equals 3. So that tells me the y coordinate of my center is at 3. Okay, so that gives us a start. Our standard form is going to be x minus 2 squared over whatever a squared happens to be, y minus 3 squared over whatever y happens to be, or excuse me, b happens to be equals 1. Let's find our b and our c based on our graph that we have here. C is the distance from the center to the focus point. How far is it from y equals 3 to y equals negative 1? It's a distance of 4. Our B is the distance from the center to the vertex. How far is it from y being 3 to y being negative 9? That's a bigger distance, the distance of 12. So, so far we know C is 4, B is 12. Let's find our a. Again, we're going to use the fact that c is equal to b squared minus a squared for this vertical ellipse. Again, our ellipse will look something like this. We get 4 equals the square root of, I'm going to go ahead and just square the b. b squared would be 144. 12 squared is 144. Square both sides, get rid of that radical and I get 16 equals 144 minus a squared, subtract 144. We get negative a squared is equal to 1 negative 128. So a is going to be the square root of 128, which I'm just going to leave that way, because when I put it up here, my a is 128, so I have x minus 2 squared over the square root of 128 squared, plus y minus 3 squared over b squared, which my b was 12. I'm going to go ahead and square those so that I am done. My answer, x minus 2 squared over 128, plus y minus 3 squared over 144, equals 1.